This is a Louis T. Network exclusive. Who else could it be? For me, Dormit. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room. Of course. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. On the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 Series, your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names of the 2016 NFL Draft. We're talking defensive linemen, and I just felt like I needed to break down the Bama boys, and I looked at both of them, and, and this goes back to the combine. Let me give you a little bit of framework and reference here as to why I'm not doing both of these guys, I'm just doing one, and the one that I like the most, because I looked at both of these players and I, and I felt like they were a package deal. Every time I heard someone talk about one, they talked about the other, and they talked about how good Ashawn Robinson is, and they talk about how Jaron Reed is kind of just the other guy. So, you know, Ashawn Robinson is the guy that can get you some pressure on the quarterback, can get in the backfield, be disruptive, don't know if he plays on every snap or not, but hey, he's really good. And then Jaron Reed is that other guy that, hey, he's a lunch pail, hard hat guy. Not going to get you much pressure on the quarterback, but he's going to stop the run. He's stopped the point of attack, going to hustle, going to give you everything he's got while he's on the field. That sounds like my type of guy. I looked at the combine, and when I saw it, I saw two guys, and I'm like, Everyone wants me to, to lean towards Ashawn Robinson. I get this feeling like everyone's telling me Ashawn Robinson, Ashawn Robinson, Ashawn Robinson. But when I watched him at the combine, I'm saying Jaron Reed, Jaron Reed, Jaron Reed. So uh, I felt good about Jaron Reed more so than I did Ashawn Robinson after watching the combine. And after I watched the tape, I felt that way even more so. So I'm telling you, I'm breaking down Alabama's Jaron Reed on the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 series and not Ashawn Robinson because I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not that impressed with Ashawn Robinson at all. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you spend the first round pick on this guy, don't be surprised if you're disappointed and you want your refund back with Ashawn Robinson. I don't care if you got receipt in hand. You take that dude in the first round, don't get mad at me when you're upset at your purchase. That's all I'm saying and I don't care. There's no returns even if you got your receipt. So let's break down Jaron Reed and why I think this guy is more so a first round pick than his running mate, Ashawn Robinson. 6'3", 307 pounds is Jaron Reed. And I look at him as a stout guy, stout at the point of attack. And to me, his first two pros, stout at the point of attack and all, all substance, no flash, okay? When you get a guy like Jaron Reed on your football team, you're not looking for a guy that's gonna be flashy. You're not looking for a guy that's gonna make a bunch of eye-popping plays. You're not gonna find a guy that's going to blow your mind with the things that he does on the football field. I say this every year, I say this all the time. Every player on your team isn't gonna be an all-pro. Every player on your team isn't gonna be a pro bowler. You need glue guys. You need guys that are just gonna show up and do their job. Nothing else. They're not going to come in and try to be uh, warriors or, or one-man gangs. They're not going to come in and try to be heroes. They're going to just do their job. And if you tell them, hey, I need you in the A-gap, I need you to stand up this blocker and don't let him push you off the line of scrimmage, Jaron Reed is going to do exactly that. So he's one of those guys that when I watch him, it takes a level of appreciation for defensive linemen to actually love what he does because he's not going to make a bunch of plays. He's not going to be a guy that's going to be extremely flashy, but he is going to do his job and he's going to help benefit your defense as a whole. Relentless, and I love high motor guys on the defensive line. Again, defensive linemen, some guys are going to play 60 out of 70 snaps. Some guys are going to be able to play 45 out of 70. Some guys are only going to be able to give you 25 good snaps out of 70 snaps defensively. He's one of those dudes that he's relentless and whether he's on the field for 45 or 60 or 68 or 70 snaps defensively, he's going to give you everything he's got when he's on the football field and he's going to be relentless in his pursuit of ball carriers. And I love that about Jaron Reed. Very aware. And I, I, I think I say this all the time when you're talking about a Nick Saban 
a defensive football player. You're going to get an aware football player. He's not a guy that's going to be tricked and fooled by a screen. He's not a guy that you're going to be able to sell on play action fake and get him to bite down on a run and have him chasing his tail all the way out to the hash. He's a guy that is aware, he knows what's going on, he's going to get his hand up, try to deflect some footballs. He's a very aware football player. And again, another one of those things that I can appreciate from a guy that's all substance and no flash. He's got a pod, okay? Paul Doom, he sticks it out there. You think you're going to run by him, you're going to stick his arm out there. Doesn't always stop you dead in your tracks. But again, I'm all about just affecting the play. Whether that means you hold off for dear life until the cavalry arrives, and that's two yards down the field, or you just stop him dead in his tracks, stone cold right there. When you make contact, he doesn't get another yard. Whatever the case may be, I'm all about affecting the play. That pot of doom, believe it or not, affects plays because if there's a clear hole there and you don't lay a finger on that ball carrier and he's got a burst, he can get from point A to point B very quickly. And if you don't at all hinder him or cause some kind of disruption to his path. The straightest path to any point is straight. So if he's able to run unmolested, uncontested up a gap, that could be trouble for your safety or whomever is back there waiting to try to stop that ball carrier. So pods of doom are huge. He's got one good pod doom to stick out there and stop ball carriers. Versatile. This is a guy that can play up and down the defensive line. He even stood him up at Alabama at times. He's a guy that they used to drop into coverage at times. I'm not a huge fan of defensive linemen dropping into coverage because there's only so much a D lineman can do when you're dropping them into coverage. But again, versatility is something that Jaron Reed will provide for you whether you play him at the three, you play him at a five, uh, or you know, you got this guy running some twists and some stunts and doing a number of different things. So I like what Jaron Reed brings to the table. And if you wanted to get a little frisky, you could even maybe sneak him at the nose. I wouldn't ask that you do that. But again, if you wanted to try to mix it up and, and move him around and put him at nose on a, a couple of snaps, you could get away with that. He's stout enough at the point of attack to allow you to get away with that. He's athletic and to me the best example you get from Jaron Reed and his athleticism is the play in the national championship game on the two point conversion to stop Deshaun Watson from getting in the end zone and cutting it to a one score game or excuse me a field goal game which would have really helped Clemson out. Scores 38 to 33 at the time. If he gets in uh, being Deshaun Watson on his two point conversion, it makes it 38 35, totally different ball game. Then a field goal allows you to tie it up and, and send this game into overtime. He's running out. We all know what kind of an athlete Deshaun Watson is. He's sprinting outside, trying to make it to the pylon desperately. Jaron Reed has a bead on him, takes the proper angle, uses his athleticism to track him down at the sideline at the two yard line and knock him out of bounds and stop him from converting on that two point conversion to me. That's the best example I have of his athleticism. It's there, it's apparent, and that play right there to me exemplifies exactly what he is as an athlete. Go to his cons, and to me, I've talked about him being a hard hat, lunch pail type of guy, not a lot of flash here, all substance, no flash. To me, that's the first con that you get from me is no dominant trait here for Jaron Reed, okay? There's nothing that stands out about his game. You don't look at him and say, okay, he's extremely quick off the snap or he's got a boatload of tricks in his bag that he can pull out at any given time. There's no explosiveness. There's, he's not an overpowering guy. There's no distinctive trait here with Jaron Reed, and, and that leads me to call him a Pam Mon guy, okay? Proficient at many, master of none. He's a Pam Mom guy, and so uh, it's, it can be frustrating at times, but again, he's a glue guy, a guy that you bring in that helps, that you won't hear his name called as often as some of these other guys, but it's because of what he does that will allow other guys on your defense to make some plays. Not much of a pass rusher is his last con for me is that you're not going to get a lot out of him 
uh, in the way of pass rush. And, and I have a problem with that if you're spending a first round pick on a defensive lineman. First round defensive linemen need to do both equally well and as I call it EAD equally as dangerous you need to be an EAD -er if you're going to be in the first round as a defensive lineman for me you can't just be a one trick pony you can't be a guy that stops the run but doesn't get pass rush you can't be a guy that gets pass rush but can't stop the run if you're going to be a first round defensive lineman you need to be an EAD -er he is not equally as dangerous when he's going after the quarterback as he is stopping the run so I'd love to see him develop some moves be a little bit more proficient at trying to get to the quarterback. Maybe that's something that will come with a little bit of tutelage at the next level, but right now he is not adept at getting to the quarterback and his numbers in college back that up. So that's Jaron Reed in a nutshell on his draft prospects 101 breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. Come back and join me as I continue to break down anything and everything in the National Football League. I got another defensive lineman to break down, and this is a big one. I'll come back, we'll break it down, see you next time. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at In The Lab Room, or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.